It's time for Health Futures with Cypress Home Care Solutions, Bob Roth. This is Arizona's only show dedicated to providing you with expert advice on how to live a longer, healthier, and happier life. To learn more, call 602-264-8009. That's 602-264-8009. Now, here's your host, Bob Roth. Good afternoon. You're listening to Health Futures Taking Stock in You, and I'm your host, Bob Roth, and it must be Friday. And indeed it is. It is the last Friday of 2021. Uh, hard to believe we're closing out this year and getting ready for 2022. Uh, but if this is your first time tuning into our show, our show is about how our older adult population can live a healthier, happier life. And how do they do this? They do this by listening to the show. And it's not about me. It's about the guests that we bring to the show. And today is no different. I have an extraordinary guest here to the show today. And I am so happy to introduce you, our listeners, to Dr. Heidi Jananga. And she is a physical therapist and also the co-founder and chief clinical officer for WebPT. And she's also the founder of Rising Tide Foundation. Heidi, welcome to the show. Bob, thank you so much for having me. You know, I, I have been following you just through the business media and what you've done at WebPT, and I'm not sure our listeners know a whole lot about you, and I know I'm going to learn so much more. I want to really turn the mic over to you and really tell us a little bit about yourself, where you're from. I did learn a little bit Florida, but tell us a little bit about yourself. You're a physical therapist, you're a doctor, um, you have this incredible company called WebPT, and uh, I'm really interested in learning more. Well, thanks. Um, I am a daughter of two immigrant parents. Uh, my mom is Japanese, and my, uh, she was, um, Im her parents immigrated to Hawaii. Um, and uh, my dad is, an au is Austrian, um, who immigrated to this country uh, in the 60s. And so um, worked for the, he worked for the U.S. Department of Agriculture for many, many years. So uh, I grew up in Winter Park, Florida, uh, where I went to high school. Um, I was an athlete, uh, played all kinds of sports. Um, somehow I very much got into basketball and was lucky enough to uh, end up playing uh, in college, where I went to UC Davis in Northern California nice. to, to play ball. But also pre-med was my original major. Um, Ended up having a knee injury my junior year of college uh, where they sent me to an orthopedist who did an MRI and said it was inconclusive. Although I had some instability, they saw that I had partially torn my ACL, but they didn't want to do surgery. So they sent me to physical therapy where I was completely enamored and inspired by my physical therapist who was able to uh, get me back onto the court that year. I was able to play with a brace. And then my senior year, I played completely without a brace, never having to have surgery. Wow. So changed my major and then went on to become a physical therapist where I went to the University of St. Augustine and, and back to Florida. Um, after I graduated, I said, you know, I really had this affinity towards the West Coast. So ended up coming out to Arizona. Uh, which was originally supposed to be a stepping stone to get back to California, but ended up really um, having some great professional opportunities here. Um, and so worked as a physical therapist, meeting a lot of my goals in sports medicine. I worked um, with a lot of professional athletes. I worked on the LPGA tour for uh, four years. So, um, you know, met a lot of the professional goals I was, wow. I was trying to accomplish. Um, and had reached the level of uh, running uh, a, one of the largest sports medicine cl uh, clinics that was located here, but largest clinics in the country that served a lot of that population. Um, and this was back in 2006. Uh, and, um, you know, as a clinic director, you have P&L responsibilities, business responsibilities. Right. And one of our largest expenses, and you have to take yourself back like 15 years because it's sometimes hard for people to believe – but we were doing all of our documentation on pe with pen and paper. Whoa. And we were doing some dictation. So that was one of the largest expenses that we had. We sure. had dicta dictating into a, a, a little you know, recording device that then got sent out to somebody who would transcribe that and then send it back. And there was an editing process. Literally, it would take about a week's time to get a note that we had dictated out to a physician. Wow. <laughs> and that was in the 2000s. And I mean, that was in the 2000s. Yeah. 
Healthcare usually runs about 10 years slower right. than other industries um, because a lot of the regulation and compliance things that we have to, hurdles that we have to sort of jump over. Um, but there, this was right at the time, you know, the Affordable Care Act was, was starting to be formulated. Um, there was something called the High Tech Act that was passed that was essentially trying to elevate, um, you know, the data and infra infrastructure within healthcare to get everybody utilizing digital technology. Um, and so we thought there had to be something out there for physical therapists. So we went out and did a search. And what we found for my practice, which was fairly large, we had about 40 employees. Um, and uh, there just really wasn't anything out there. Everything was server-based. So I had to sit at a desk at a PC and insert a floppy disk into oh, the computer. <laughs> We're taking ourselves back here, right? But this is in the 2000s. In the 2000s. Yeah, mm, wow. in the 2000s. And so... Um, Happened to be dating a software engineer at the time where we put our heads together and said, okay, like we're going to build something for your practice to, to take it to the next level. Um, and we, we built something in about nine months that was really a, a documentation system that allowed us to do what I, we needed to do. Um, and uh, yeah, started getting very positive feedback in the next six months. Um, a lot of my colleagues in the Phoenix area said, hey, what are you doing over there? I heard you're saving some money. Like, we could definitely try this. And we had another 10 clinics up and running in that next six months, giving us positive feedback, continuing to iterate on the project. Um, and then we did a little market research, and we found that 80% of therapists across the U.S. were having the same issues that I was having and also documenting on pen, pen and paper. And wow. so that's when the light bulb went off. Yeah. And we decided to launch the company, WebPT, in February of 2008. And we sold five clinics that very first month. And so you fast forward to where we are today, like almost 15 years later. How many clinics are using WebPT now? Today we ha hold 40% market share in the outpatient sector, which equates to about 18,000 practices, um, over 80, close to 90,000 users. Wow. So, uh, yeah, it's been a tremendous, tremendous ride. Um, it's only 13 years. Yeah, 13 years. I mean, really, it, <laughs> it is amazing. And, and you went from the dark ages and bringing, bringing all of this stuff, the dictation and the documentation up into, you know, present yeah. time. And as a physical therapist, you know, continuing to as a founder <clears throat> of a technology company, you know, Heidi Jenenga and technology weren't often used in the same sentence back then. So it's been a tremendous personal and professional, um, you know, growth and, and journey through these last 13, 15 years. So I always say 15 years because we started in 2006 with, with actual building. So, you know, the actual company in existence. But, yeah, 13 years of growth. But what's interesting is that, you know, you saw it more from a user standpoint. Yeah. Obviously, you had a partner that understood the engineering piece. That's right. And every time they went through an iteration, you're like, no, that's not going to work. Or, yeah, I like where you're going. Can you go a little bit further with that? Yeah, exactly. And then, you know, one of the the differentiators that we get a lot of credit for is always um, having that connection with our users. And, you know, being in the industry myself and continuing to be a, a, in the industry today of really leading the charge of not just being a technology company, but a company that truly understands and um, is supporting the industry and what we're developing and what we um, are doing, you know, in terms of technology and advocacy and other things for the industry as a whole. And I would imagine that, you know, this iteration that you're in right now, you're always looking for continuous improvement, right? I mean, you're getting feedback from the users, mm -hmm. you're seeing things and you're constantly tweaking and changing things. Absolutely. I mean, we started with the the small sliver of documentation. Today, we have a full suite of products and platform a platform company today that is really um, helping any uh, outpatient physical therapy and hospital outpatient business run their practice. Wow. Uh, even to an enterprise level, you know, of, of companies that have 500 clinics across the U.S. And I would imagine that device that's sitting right there in front of you, um, you have an app and you're able to probably do things right there on a on a Droid or an Apple. There product. are components of our platform, but um, the majority of, you know, what you do as a physical therapist and the amount of documentation and the billing components that are um, that are involved in getting paid for your services 
um, are very difficult to do just uh, through a phone. Uh, the complicated needs of compliance and things like that. But there are definitely pieces of our application, like scheduling and other things that obviously can be done uh, via a, a mobile device. Uh, we were the first, one of the first applications actually to be browser agnostic. So you could nice. use it on any application. So not just a Windows platform, something like that. Um, and so that does allow it to be very useful on a, on a mobile device as well. Well, you can hear the music. We got a little who taking us out in the first segment. We got three more segments to come up. I got Heidi Jananga here in the studio. WebPT, we're talking WebPT, its origins and where they are going. Stick around. We got three more segments. We'll be right back. Now back to Health Futures, taking stock in you. If you have questions about your own or your loved one's future health care, call 602-264-8009. Now, here's your host, Cypress Home Care Solutions, Bob Roth. Welcome back. You're listening to Health Futures, taking stock in you. I'm your host, Bob Roth, and if you're just tuning in, I've got Dr. Heidi Jananga here in the studio. She is the co-founder and chief clinical officer at WebPT. If you missed that first segment, go up to our website at cypresshomecare.com. Click on the media button. Third button down is radio show. And in the first segment, you, you, if you missed it, you missed about Heidi's story. And Heidi, you have an incredible story about how you launched this company and how you got into physical therapy. Uh, I used to play college athletics, so I totally get it. And personally, I am a huge fan of physical therapy, and I want to really talk about in this segment the benefits of rehab therapy and how advancements in telehealth and technology are making hands-on medicine more accessible. But for you and our listeners, I've always been a huge fan of physical therapy. They put me back together again when I broke a few times in high school and in college, and even now as an older adult, when I strain something or twist an ankle or my shoulder's hurting, my hip is bothering me, I have a physical therapist. I mentioned his name before, Matt Hubble. The guy's got magic hands. Before I would even see an orthopedic surgeon, I would go to him first and say, okay, what do you think? He goes, I think if you come see me for a month, three days a week, we'll get you back. And invariably he does. Um, but I will tell you, physical therapy's hard. It's not easy. And some people think the injuries are really hard. And, and trust me, I've had some surgeries where he's had to put me back together. And you really got to do the work. You do have to do the work. And I, um, I appreciate you giving the endorsement to physical therapists because I think not many people know that we are doctorate level professionals um, and have expertise in the musculoskeletal world. Uh, and so anything, you know, sprains, strains, post-surgical care, like, and also, I mean, we have a lot of different specializations within our industry as well, whether it's neuro, so post-stroke patients, um, if you've had a brain injury, uh, all the way to pediatrics, actually, right, um, in developmental issues with, with kids. So we span the lifespan so we can... Um, you know, there's specialties all, all along the way in which a therapist can be helpful to you. But even today, um, you know, 90% of people who have a uh, diagnosis that could be helped by a physical therapist, unfortunately, aren't getting into us. So it's a huge piece of advocacy that we're doing now. And sure. so thank you for this opportunity to have me stand on my soapbox and talk about physical therapists because we add such value um, to preventative care. So getting in to see us when you do have that strain before it gets to the place where you need to have surgery. Um, we have the ability to prevent surgeries by treating the cause of what's going on in the beginning. Uh, and so there's just a lot of really um, uh, great opportunity. If you haven't seen a physical therapist, I think the other misnomer is that you have to see a, a physician first in order to get a referral. In all 50 states, um, we have something called direct access to where you, um, if you get an injury and you say, oh man, this is something a physical therapist I think could help me with, or it's a musculoskeletal injury, rather than going to your physician first and having to wait to get an appointment, you can go right into a PT's office in all 50 states and get seen and evaluated by a physical therapist with any insurance that you have, including Medicare. did not even know that. 
I always thought you had to go to your primary care first to get that referral. Nope. You do not. It's every all 50 states, direct access, step right into a physical therapist's office, and they can see you, um, especially with Medicare insurance. So it's, it's interesting. When I described my physical therapist, Matt, and, and, and I was talking to you offline that he has magic hands, um, there's just something about physical medicine and getting your hands on the patient to really feel whether, you know, it's an ankle or a hip or a shoulder. I mean, that, that's, that is something that, you know, you're trained to do that nobody else can really understand. Yes, we um, have extensive training in diagnostics, like doing the special tests, we call them special tests, to assess different injuries, um, in whether it's your spine, soft tissue, joints, um, you name it. We, we have had extensive uh, education in those, those areas. Sure. And then, of course, the treatment to follow. Um, and most physical therapists are very connected with physicians, so um, we work hand in hand. If there are other further diagnostic tests that might be warranted, like uh, you know uh, an X-ray or an MRI, um, we work very closely with with physicians to where they we can refer back and forth to make sure we get the whatever testing and things that are needed. But for the most part, we're able to diagnose those things and treat them on there without having to do those. That's the whole savings sure. of downstream costs that insurance companies and, and um, you know, we love to tout about the value that we provide. It is amazing. And, I mean, being a patient of physical therapy, I mean, you know, whether it be ultrasound, whether it be the icing, uh, you know, one of the things that, you know, when I played ball, you know, they never really talked about core strengthening, right? And now it's all about strengthening your core, right? And, and it's like, you know, if you don't have a strong core, you – We'll have a bad back. You'll have other injuries. You've got to work on getting a strong core. Yeah. Well, and one of the things I think um, that, you know, people sometimes hesitate because it is hard work, but we provide as physical therapists the tools and the education to allow you to continue even after you're done with your prescribed amount of care to continue on with things that will allow you to keep that injury at bay or to continue strengthening in a way that's going to prevent uh, further injury in the future. That is one of the big differentiators, I think, with, with physical therapists, um, is that we're not a one-stop, one quick, you know, click, click, and you're, and you're quote-unquote fixed. This is a long-term relationship we want to have with our patients um, that, you know, you were going to keep, you talked about seeing Matt for multiple things, right? And right. so it's, a, it's this relationship that's built over time that um, provides the education, provides the treatment plan uh, for long-term health um, and benefits. Uh, he gives me copies of exercises. I have some bands at home. I mean, you know, I, I have all the tools because you're right. I mean, it doesn't just happen right there when you go for treatment. You have to do your homework, and you have to do the exercises on your own as well. Well, and talk about technology. So that's um, something that is now becoming more regularly available to f with physical therapists is not just the, the paper cutouts anymore of your exercises, but actually having videos and uh, tech-enabled um, platforms to allow you to, see, to, to um, communicate with your therapist, whether it's just uh, texting back and forth, uh, hey, I'm ready for a, a new set of exercises, or these are getting too easy, um, or even telehealth. Um, this is uh, something that through this pandemic that has really risen in um, benefit to our patients and reaching to more patients actually is through the use of telehealth. So you can actually, you know, watch you do some exercises at home and you don't necessarily always have to come into the clinic. Now, you can't get away from the manual therapy, the hands-on care, right. which is bar none, you know, part of our secret sauce as physical therapists, but uh, definitely, you know, makes it a little more accessible and easier to manage with, you know, visits and transportation and things like that. So when you really talk about doing some exercises at home, and, and let's face it, I mean, today everyone uses YouTube. I mean, if, if you buy something, you need to put it together – Nobody's sitting there reading the instructions. They go to YouTube and, and they, they watch somebody put it together and they want to do that, putting it together. Is, is that, you know, is there a suite of exercises that you go through through a, a specific software? Is that something that WebPT yeah. offers? Through WebPT, we have a home exercise program wow. suite of videos and the therapist prescribes and, and specifically names the exercises. For, so, for example, the five exercises that might, might have you doing right now 
he would choose those um, in WebPT, and you would basically get a video showing you exactly what you just did in the, in the clinic so that you could reproduce that at home. So wait, wait a second. So WebPT is not just for clinicians. It's for consumers, too? Um, yes. Well, I didn't know that. <laughs> no, seriously, I'm just finding that out. So, so if I went to Matt and he was using WebPT, he could give me those exercises. And do I need like a special password to get in? Or? Yeah, there's obviously for, yeah. for security benefits, you, you have a password to get in. Um, wow. Yeah, so there's a, there's a lot of growth that we've had through WebPT that uh, actually in, brings the patient into the mix, whether it's a billing portal, payments, or this home exercise program, even on the front end of marketing so um, and education, so providing newsletters and um, you know the newest things that the clinic is doing, all those things can come out of WebPT. That's really fascinating. See, I, I went into this thinking this was a clinician-driven software, and it's so much more. Wow, very, very cool. Well, you hear the music. I think this is Coldplay, right? We got some Coldplay. You know, they're coming in concert, going to it next year. So I'm really excited about that. But I'm even more excited about having Heidi Jananga here in the studio. We're learning about WebPT. We're talking physical therapy. And, you know, here we are at the end of the year. And, and you know, we need to make these resolutions. And one of them is better health. And unfortunately, with better health, sometimes people exercise a little too much and they may get a little injured. But I am an advocate of physical therapy, and I'm so glad to have you here in the studio. We've got two more segments. It's halftime here at Health Futures. Stick around. We'll be right back. Now back to Health Futures, taking stock in you. If you have questions about your own or your loved one's future health care, call 602-264-8009. Now, here's your host, Cypress Home Care Solutions, Bob Roth. Welcome back. You're listening to Health Futures Taking Stock in You. I'm your host, Bob Roth. And if you are just tuning in, I've got Heidi Jananga here in the studio. She's the co-founder and chief clinical officer of WebPT. She's also the founder of Rising Tide Foundation. And if you missed the first two segments, you can catch them up on our website at cypresshomecare.com. Click on the media button. Third button down is radio show. You can catch this show and many, many more. And in the first half, we talked a lot about WebPT and its origins. Uh, Heidi talked about her background. Uh, she talked about in this last segment, we talked about technology and gosh, I was so fascinated. I thought it was more clinical technology, but it's consumer stuff too, which is really, really fascinating. And I really want to pivot, if you would, into this third segment and really talk about the benefits of exercise and flexibility and strength as we age. I mean, you know, our show is about health futures and how our old, older adult population can live a healthier, happier life. And so many of them it really lived a sedentary lifestyle, and so many of them are paying the dues right now. Um, certainly the generation I'm caring for, but you know, Heidi, I, I fall into the baby boomers. I just barely make it, and uh, this generation right now is our aging population. Nobody really talked about 2021 being the, the year where the oldest started turning 75, but guess what? You know, now, here it is at the end of 2021. In nine years, they're going to start turning 85. So, Heidi, I want to turn it back over to you and turn, really talk about the benefits of strength training and flexibility and aging. Well, you're right. This is the fastest growing segment um, as, we, as our population is aging. Um, and I will say, you know, uh, especially through this pandemic, we have seen a significant increase in the sedentariness of population in general. We're working from home, um, not necessarily an ergonomically set up desk that we have, you know, at home, you may be sitting at the countertop or, a, you know, make, makeshift uh, a desk. But um, especially as we think about the, the aging population, there's two areas that really are the most important to be focusing on, and that's flexibility and strength. You mentioned core strength. Yes. Core meaning not just what we think about, like your abs, like your crunches and things like that, but it has to do with that lower back, your glutes, the buttocks, right? The biggest muscles in your body. The biggest muscle, the powerhouse literally of your body. Um, and it's those lower, deep abdominals that, um, you know, it's not what you look at when you look at in the mirror. 
It's not, you know, trying to get that six pack. Well, I have a six pack. It's just covered in ice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but it's really those sets of muscles that we think about in the midsection of our body that as we think about core. So, um, and you know, the flexibility component, uh, we start to lose range of motion as we get older. If we're just, it's the old adage of you, if you don't use it, you lose it is actually very true. Um, and you mentioned sedentary. Mm -hmm. There are areas you, you start to, when you stand up out of a chair, right? Your body wants to stay in that same flexed or bent position as a chair. It's hard to stand up straight. Uh, and so those hip flexors, the muscles in the front of your hips are probably your, we call it the iliopsoas or your quadriceps, um, two segments, uh, or two parts of your or body that really need paying attention to if you are doing a lot of sitting. So the, the more you can get into a flexibility, I a huge advocate of yoga. I do yoga myself. I'm a hot yoga person. Me too. Uh, I, I do yoga and, and we were talking about that offline. I mean, I, I've been to uh, over 100 classes so far this year and, and doing exactly what you're talking about. It's strength training and flexibility. Um, you know, I, I'm working on my core, my hips, um, those big muscles that you're talking about. Yes, and it's um, in the strength training, uh, you know, we talk a lot about as physical therapists where you build the most strength. And it's not just only your muscles. Um, we're talking about bone strength and bone density is really uh, something that you know, deteriorates, especially in women, um, as we get older. And so, uh, weight bearing, like, like gentle squats, sit to stand, you know, things that you're doing with your feet on the ground, um, weight bearing things are what helps to build up that density of bone as well, or keep at least keep it, um, stronger. So, uh, really important things that th things to think about. Um, and you're never too old to do yoga. My mom is turning 89 this year. Wow. And she's still, even though it's, it's part of it is in chair yoga and part of it is holding onto a, a ballet bar. Um, but it is in still going strong at, at 89. And I, I, um, am really proud of her for continuing on with exercise, even, you know, sometimes when, it because it's not always the first thing you think about when you wake up in the morning, but it should be. It should be, and and certainly, I mean, it, it really is about training for the sport of life. I mean, you really need a strong core. You need those glutes and abs to be really strong to be able to get up and sit down. And you know, for our listeners, I mean, I, the thing I often think about, and especially if you're one that is going to church or synagogue, when you go to stand up, don't grab the seat in front of you to pull yourself up, you want to be able to try to pull yourself up utilizing just your core, right? Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Use the core and those quads, the strength of your legs to really make sure you're doing that. Um, getting out and walking. I know a lot of people um, are probably thinking about their New Year's resolutions, as you mentioned earlier, yeah, and yeah, exercise yeah. always seems to be one of the, oh, I need to exercise more. Um, but seeking out a physical therapist to help you get into a proper program is something you can do for sure. It's something we help with a lot to, because it's not just about any exercise. It's very, um, important to get, you know, good, uh, recommendations on the exercises and the flexibility components. So getting through an evaluation and look, understanding the areas that you truly are in need. It's not just a generic program, but something that's more tailored specifically to your needs, um, especially as we get older, I think is, is, is critically important. You know, as people are thinking about the new year, sometimes their expectations are a little too aggressive. And I mean, you have to be realistic in your expectations and, you know, you got to crawl before you walk and walk before you run. And, you know, I, I certainly would love for you to maybe give our listeners some advice on that because as they're sitting here thinking about, hey, 22, you know, we, hopefully this pandemic's behind us because it's not right now, but hopefully it will be in 2022. But, you know, how can they set themselves up for success? Yeah, it's a really a holistic approach. Um, and you're right. Like you don't want to come out of the gate having done nothing for a whole year or, or, you know, very little and just try to be super aggressive in the first 30 days. That's just a recipe for injury. And so it um, it's about patience and, you know, starting with a couple days a week, moving into maybe three days a week. Um, and slow, if, if it's starting to hurt, like in those first few weeks, you are going to get some muscle fatigue and, and muscle soreness. That is normal. Um, 
but that should dissipate over, you know, the first week or so. And if you're continuing to have pain, that's not a good sign. Um, this should be fun. Right. Um, it should be engaging, something you look forward to um, every day in your exercise routine. Um, and especially in, in, in someone who's um, coming into exercise, maybe uh, newer to exercise, it's always good to take days off as well or to, um, you know, do different things on different days. So maybe one day it's about more cardio or you're getting your heart rate up, going for a walk, taking a bike ride. Um, doing the Peloton, whatever the things, you know, that are, uh, going to get that heart rate and you're starting to sweat a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then another strength training day where you're working on a few different of your larger muscle groups. Um, and then, you know, maybe taking a day off and then, so cycling into different days on different, uh, doing different exercises on different days, um, also helps you engage and keeps it new and fresh where you're not getting bored. Sure. I love how you said cycling into it, but yeah, that's perfect. And, and you know, it's interesting too, for our listeners to understand that soreness that you feel mm -hmm. after you've exercised, that soreness is really inflammation that you've caused. And as I understand it, it's helping you grow and it's helping your muscles grow. So that's, it's not a bad thing to have that soreness. It's normal. After. And it actually, um, it, it's about breaking down the tissue a little bit in order for it to actually grow. As you mentioned, that's how you build muscle is during that soreness phase. Interesting. You know, I, I also know that over these last few years, CrossFit has been really big. And, you know, we talked about a couple of orthopods that we both know, and they, they tell me that CrossFit is their best access to clients and patients because, you know, the human body's not meant to do some of those exercises that people do in CrossFit. I, I look at that and I say, there's no way I'm going to do that. That just doesn't make sense. Yeah, in all fairness, CrossFit is good for some folks, but not good for everyone, right? So, yeah, it's there's there's always these trendy things that we want to be aware of. You're listening to Health Futures Taking Stock and You. I've got Heidi Jenenga here in the studio. We are down three segments. we got one more to go. We'll be right back. Now back to Health Futures taking stock in you. If you have questions about your own or your loved one's future health care, call 602-264-8009. Now, here's your host, Cypress Home Care Solutions, Bob Roth. Welcome back. You're listening to Health Futures, taking stock in you. I'm your host, Bob Roth. And if you're just tuning in, I got Heidi Jenanga in the studio. She is the co-founder and chief clinical officer of WebPT. She's also the founder of Rising Tide Foundation. And if you missed those first three segments, go up to our website at cypresshomecare.com. Click on the media button. Third button down is radio show. So every segment I've reintroduced you, I've talked about this rising tide foundation. And the only thing I really know is a foundation dedicated to fostering diversity and inclusiveness in the physical therapy workforce. But I'd love to learn why you got this thing started and where do you want to take this thing and use this as a platform for you to describe this foundation and what you're doing. Yeah, thanks. I appreciate that. Um, you know, the success of WebPT has, um, you know, afforded me some financial success. And um, I started uh, this foundation called Rising Tide actually um, at the beginning of 2020, but really didn't know what I wanted to do with it. I knew that I wanted to give back to the industry that had given me so much and the, so much that I take pride in as being a physical therapist. Um, and we do this uh, state of rehab therapy industry report. It's a survey of um, our industry as a whole that we do with WebPT. And for the last five years, one of the big things that come feedback that comes out of that is um, the lack of diversity, ethnic diversity within our profession. It doesn't match. We're very homogeneous uh, as far as, as as healthcare providers, and it doesn't match, you know, the um, general population. General population, yeah. whether it's in this state or any others. And and, and you have over a hundred thousand therapists that are on web PT. We, yeah, just, oh, just cl over 90, 90,000. Okay. We're approaching nine hundred thousand this year. Maybe after people listen to the show. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. Um, and so, you know, as someone who identifies as a person of color with my, my background, it's something that I 
thought that I could have uh, an impact on and have influence over. And so um, I had named Rise, the, the, the foundation Rising Tide um, for the saying, you know, rising tides raises all boats. It's sure. something that, you know, had resonated with me when I heard this a long time ago. I, my, my dad actually used to say that. And so... Um, it's a great metaphor. It is a great metaphor. And it's something that we've taken to heart with WPT as far as building a community around what we've done. And so I sort of took that uh, energy and, and sort of thought process around building a community um, around scholars. So I've launched a scholarship program with Rising Tide that um, provides scholarships for um, incoming uh, students into the physical therapy, into, into the doctorate programs of physical therapy. Um, and it's a, they get $14,000, five students get $14,000 to s kick off their uh, PT program, which is on average about two and a half to three years. So it's a chance to renew those three years. Nice. And then on the flip side, those that have graduated or that are already in the profession, we have residency programs now in PT. And so those are usually one year programs. And so we've um, launched a, pr a scholarship for, re for residency programs as well for three students who are going through residency because that usually gives you a leg up into leadership. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that, in essence, it's a, is where we're starting. Um, but the vision is really around these scholars graduating from PT school, becoming awesome leaders within uh, the industry, and every cohort will have those scholars come back and be able to mentor this new set of scholars. So we'll be building this community around Rising Tide. And we provide education along the way and um, you know, uh, different uh, interesting events in which you're going to meet thought leaders from the industry and people you wouldn't have access to uh, should you not be a part of the scholarship program. And have a cohort, too, to kind of yeah. learn from and mentor and, and do all those things. That's right. No, That's that, right. That, that is fascinating. So for our listeners, if they want to learn more about this how, how do they yeah they can go to rising-tide.com um all the information is there um, and, and you spell rising with a z right? yes i spell rising r-i-z-i-n-g that's okay. right just want to make sure people know that yep um just kind of differentiating who we are and, and standing apart and then also uh starting in 2022 we will be uh, allowing donations to come in to support our cause as well so there'll be a donate button should you feel uh, compelled to, you know, help more physical therapists be entrance into the industry. You know, one of the biggest, other biggest pieces of this was, um, as many of you probably heard or have, you know, um, maybe your kids are, are experiencing the high student debt uh, problem. Um, physical therapists come out with $100,000 plus in debt. Uh, and so it's not commensurate with how much, you know, they get paid. Um, it takes a long time to get that paid off. And so- right. Um, it's something, again, you know, piece by piece, um, we're hoping to grow the program to to many more scholarship opportunities in the future. So for our listeners, it's rising, R-I-Z-I-N-G hyphen tide, T-I-D-E dot com. Mm -hmm. And we certainly have the listenership here that if they want to, I mean, with Money Radio to donate, there's a donate button on that site. Not yet. In 2022, there will be. Okay. Yeah. Fine, fine. Finalizing the 501c3 changes to... So when I launched it, it was fully funded by myself, but the outpouring of support that people have wanted to donate has just been absolutely incredible. So Love I went it. back and changed my 501c3 parameters in order to allow that to happen in 2022. All right. So stay so tuned. Tomorrow. Yes, tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> so, so as we conclude this show... Is there anything I haven't asked you or any questions you were expecting to hear that you would like to share with our audience? And then I also want to give this throw out is what do you see healthcare in the future, 2022 and beyond? I mean, we talked about, you know, for our listeners that are baby boomers and aging, that flexibility and strength is really important and all these new year's resolutions are happening. So would love for you in these last couple minutes, either, Tell me a question I haven't asked or something you were thinking about or some type of message you would like to leave with our listeners. Yeah, healthcare has become such a priority for so many people. Um, a, I want people to understand how important it is to your own lifestyle and to be advocates for yourselves, um, whether it's with your, your own providers 
um, or it's politically, um, advocate on behalf of yourself, of your needs and how you see healthcare benefiting you. Um, and then I'll just uh, trickling down to, you know, my passion as a physical therapist. Um, I would love to have you all put on your, uh, new year's, you know, new year's resolution list to visit a physical therapist this year, um, to get an assessment done. Uh, on your musculoskeletal sort of assessment of where you are and get a program going this year, whether it's flexibility or um, a strength training program, um, truly ta tailored to, to you and your needs. Um, th those are two things that I, I think would be really incredibly important. And for the preventative care um, specifically and preventing injuries moving forward. Well, as you shared with us in our previous episode, our previous segment, you don't need a referral. Mm -hmm. You just need to find one. And, and, and how do you recommend people finding physical therapists? Well, a lot of times it comes from people like you who have been through physical therapy and they, it's, a, it's, a, it's a friend referral, right? Someone who you trust and has been, has been seeing a physical therapist. Um, and they know a really good one and they, they trust that that is usually the best way to find uh, a good one. Um, there's also, you know, different uh, search engines out there that if you type in what you need, um, you know, a physical therapist in your area will, will definitely pop up. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. So what are you doing to celebrate the New Year's? Um, well... We always celebrate um, in Cabo, so nice. we, our whole family will be together, and um, we will be bringing in the new year with a little bit of chips and salsa, and uh, and a lot of cheer. A lot of cheer, <laughs> exactly. Of che <laughs> well, I tell you what, uh, Heidi Jananga, I can't thank you enough. I I knew who you were. I never had a chance to meet you. I'm so happy that you got a chance to at least don our studio and share with our listeners all these really good things about physical therapy and the great work that you have done with WebPT. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank, Wish, yeah, thank you, Bob. It's been an honor. Well, wishing you a, a happy and healthy new year. And to our listeners, be careful out there. Uh, wishing you the best for 2022. Make it a great day, and we'll be back next Friday. There's no place like home. You've been listening to Bob Roth's Health Futures. If you have questions about your own or your loved one's future health care, call Cypress Home Care Solutions at 602-264-8009. That's 602-264-8009. Or visit cypresshomecare.com. Be sure to join Health Futures with Bob Roth every Friday at noon, right here on Money Radio 1510 and 105.3 FM.